Here we go. We got it. So welcome in everyone to Learn with Google um, for October 24. Um, I am not Chris Betcher. Uh, he is in uh, another session. So I'll be, um, you've got the B team uh, this, this month. So I'll be looking after you today. We have some amazing presenters with us today. We have Phil and Karen who are going to help help present with uh, our theme being the world is your playground, bringing geo tools into your classroom. But before we begin that, let's um, welcome everyone in. So te he mori ora, uh, ina, ina maunga whakahi, ina waituku kiri, uh, ki te tūpuna tēnā koe, tēnā koutou katoa. And uh, for our cousins across the pond there, we'd um, like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands on which you meet um, and which we meet as a group whose cultures and customs have nurtured and continue to nurture the land of Australia. And we honour the presence of the ancestors who reside in the imagination of the land and the elders past, present and emerging. So the outline, uh, sorry, the team, um, the team today, um, part of, not today, but the team uh, that are part of the ANZ and Increasingly, an APAC um, team, you'll see a note of a number of our team there have uh, regional or APAC responsibilities now. So we are growing across Asia Pacific. So today's agenda, um, we've done the, the first piece there, the welcome from me. And then we're going to have um, jump over to the wonderful Karen, who's going to have a look at some geo tools, then pass it over to Philip, who's also going to look at some geo tools as well. And then I'll round it out, depending on time available, with um, some what's new from Google. And of course, at the end, if you want to stay around for any questions and answers, feel free to do that. So without further ado, because I've taken three minutes thus far, I'll pass it over to Karen. Karen, you can either um, take over presenting if you want. Might be the easiest. Why don't you, why don't you present? Um, okay. Off and then jump okay. in jump into there and i'll jump into there sorry just bear with me people it's first time doing this uh live no problem so what i can do is i'll stop presenting and then you can jump into yours so that, there you go perfect Yeah, looks good. Oh, but we've lost we've lost your voice. Actually, Gary, if you stop if you stop your presenter, then just press or, um tab, then you will get your your audio as well. Yeah. Oh, we can hear you again now. Perfect. Yep. No, you're back on, Kieran. Can't even hear you guys. We can hear you. We're good. Sweet, no problem at all. What I'll do is I will, Phil, do you want to jump into yours? And we'll let Karen jump out and come back. Um, and then we can, you can go, you can go first. That's, okay, that's good with me. Perfect. Sound. Jump in and Karen, you can go, you can jump in after Philip. Perfect. Sorry, I think I've now got my sound back. You're all good. Oh yeah, I can't. Um, 
So you can see my slide deck and you can hear me. I've just we just lost your slides. Oh. Can you see them again now? No. I'm not sure. No, we can't see your slides. Tell you do you want me to do you want me to jump into the present and you can just drive it? Uh yeah, that's all right. I, I can see them myself here. I am moving them across, but no one else is. No, we can't see your slides. Yeah, well, okay. All right, I'll stop I'll stop sharing and you can drive. All right, let's do that one. Uh, let's jump into there. You should be a co-presenter. So Phil, can you see the little controls at the bottom of the slides on the meet screen? Um I can't know. Okay, sweet as you can just, just give us the good good old next slide and then then I can do that for you. Yeah, all right, okay. Well I'll put my time we're on so i'm uh, sticking to time um look uh nice to, to meet everybody uh, i'm phil crosby um i teach um at st joseph's primary school in austinville so that's um uh, in the northern rivers so like north new south wales we normally say we're close to byron bay because that's what people know um so that, that's where i am i'm currently um assistant principal in learning and teaching but um um a few years before that i was um a yeah, classroom teacher normally in stage three years five and six and a uh, digital innovator for a, a number of years as well so just so you know a bit of my background obviously um i'm not from uh, australia originally um and yeah if i do any kind of public speaking i, I tend to get a stronger accent as well so i, I apologize uh, there um, that's just what happens so i'll, I'll do my best nice um Oh, I can. I've got the arrows now, so I can. Great. Have. Yeah, great. Well, I'll just start share, sharing something simple that that I've used uh, a number of times with, with different classrooms, which is which is my maps, which I think is a really underrated um, tool. It's really simple um, for, for especially with teachers that are. Uh, maybe not so confident with, with, with technology but um yeah students can um, can pick it up really easy as well uh this top um example we pretty much create our, our whole um english unit of work on on the map so we just added different layers um as you can see here so like when we were working on our writing we'd bring up that layer and the kids could access it there we'd have a layer for for reading um you know for, for grammar and punctuation um, uh, and things like and things like that so the good thing uh, with my map sheet once you once you've pinned it um you know you can delete the information box and then add whatever you want in so you can add a video you can add uh, a link you know you can add instructions for a task so you know what we do is we do the explicit instruction first and then you know once we knew that students had the skills then it was almost like a bit of a choice board you know they could explore the map um and it just made uh, connections with our geography as well because we were doing um, yeah our geography was a diverse and connected world so we wanted to make as much connections with our geography as well so yeah so you can use it as a choice board um or resource board like i said we used it to plan our basically whole unit of work around um, and it's similar with this bottom uh, example as well. We'd gone through that explicit um, teaching stage. Um, you know, we'd gone through the skills of informative writing. And then again, we just made this as a, a student choice board uh, as the map. Um, and yeah, they could explore the different uh, different links and then choose something, um, you know, which uh, kind of took a fancy uh, to them. Um, yeah, moving on to this is... Um, using Google Air and the Google projects. Uh, so yeah, this uh, this one example, it's gonna be probably hard to, uh, I can't click on the link. I don't know if you're able to click on the link. Um, Steve? Uh, where's your is link? The, is the link attached on the on the deck? Oh, yeah, let me, let me the image. Image. I think, oh, we're, we're, in, uh, we're, in share, we're in the present mode, so I can't see that, but let me jump into another version of it and I'll grab yeah. it. But yeah, but that's uh, that's all right. So yeah, um, Google Projects, like I said, we're um, Catholic primary school, so we were doing some uh, some work on on the saints. Um, so yeah, we I, we did a, a Google Earth um, project. This is the just a simple one that the, the 
um, I created and it basically took you it was a story of St. Patrick's uh, life um, and each stage it would zoom in to different parts of the of the countries and give you a you know an ex um, you know give you give you an explanation uh, of the saint that the life background their achievements you know there was some criteria there so that was the exemplar um, and then the students could go on choose their own saint and they had to you know, create their own google earth project um yeah on the on the saint so it's good because you can just oh there you go so yeah so students could you know, create their own kind of title page um and yeah and then it would take them on this journey of uh, the life around a saint and then you could do any example you know like um in history with um famous figures or you're doing a kind of biography um yeah this was just how a simple example and you can obviously take it down to to street view as well so it just gives that really immersive uh, experience you know you can add your text there so i've done this with um with creating narratives as well um but yeah this was just an example of doing a uh, doing a biography so yeah that's that's good i had to get an example of a nice cathedral which is near my hometown I nice i got that in there so <laughs> uh, yeah good to move on steve um and then yes yeah, some other projects we've done with google earth and um, this top one we actually did this at the start of the year a kind of a get to know you um activity for the teachers so the teacher would do one and, and um you know take the students through kind of their life um and their background and then yeah you know kind of a an icebreaker and this was a, this was our, our icebreaker and we worked on it throughout the week and then the good thing with this is it didn't take time to okay you know 30 students present at a time um you know they, they could share the links and you know have to spend time exploring people's projects and making connections and then we had a map on the wall and we pinned you know where people's different families was was from and, and things like that so that was a really good kind of get to know activity and then this bottom one sorry oh sorry yeah this this bottom this other one was uh in in, in geography and we were looking at the um the 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 climate and the land and the geographical features of australia so the the task for students was to do a tourism campaign uh, and the tourism campaign was yeah using the google earth project so yeah yeah i haven't got the link to, to take you around but they would then go in the, um all these different places you know you got sydney opera house barrier reef um Uluru, you know Uluru, so it's like yeah, different environments and they would go and explain and that would be able to yeah, demonstrate their understanding yeah good to go steve nice uh the feeling lucky you know the the, the random um uh, takes you to anywhere uh, in the world kind of random so with a few ways i've done this is is you know using that venn diagram uh working with partners you do a lucky dice i do a lucky dice and then you compare the features we were doing natural and man-made features um so that was just a great we do that as a, as a start of every uh, geography lesson because that was the, the key thing we're looking at with those uh, younger students um and obviously and we do it a lot of the time for quick writes as well we do it get it up on the board quick write okay list as many nouns as you can list as many adjectives as you can you know list as many, what verbs would be taking place in this picture so um and you could do a quick write for creative writing as well uh, that's good i know we're kind of running out of time I think I've got maybe one or two more. Yeah, we're good. No, keep going. That's good. And then, yeah, lastly is a really good tool and really kind of powerful with the students is, is the time lapse. Um, so in the geography unit that we were looking at, we were looking at factors that shape places. Um, so these images, you can see that we were looking at the um, city development and population growth. So you can see uh, this kind of a before and after. Um, I've just took stills from here because um, yeah we do the time lapse and, and students would then um, either do like a screencastify um, and then explain their understanding of they, they, they would you know, you know explain what's going on in the time lapse or you can take screenshots like I have and then they could annotate you know something like in Google drawing you know looking at looking at the city beforehand where's the development happening in the, in the city and if you go to the next slide it's my last one um we did it for bushfires as well so as you, here's the example on kangaroo island um you can see in the in the left hand side picture nice and lush and green and then we've got the difference with the bushfires so again um 
yes, students would do their explanations of the effects of bushfires over a, a screencast video. Um, and then again, a good thing about the Google Earth as well, you know, even though they could go and research the fact of, you know, the area of forest that was destroyed, you know, they can use their measurement tools uh, as well. So yeah, there's just a, a few, um, yeah, ideas um, that, you know, we've used over these last couple of years. So I'm hoping, yeah, you take something from it. Thank you. Thanks, Philip. It did, did uh, takes me back to my days of teaching the geography classroom. So, so uh, thank you very much for that. Um, love a bit of Google Earth, uh, and you're right. My maps is one of those things that you show some people, and they they have never seen it before, and it's a fantastic little tool. I love the way you're using it for writing as well, and it does give that extra little hook um, to a task. Excellent. Thank you very much. All right, we'll throw back to you, Karen. So you should have the controls on the bottom as well, hopefully. And hopefully uh, you can hear me this time. Yes, we can. Excellent. Tech is playing nicely. I couldn't okay, even okay. hear you before, so we kind of all got a bit lost. <laughs> so, apologies for that, everybody. Uh, kia ora koutou, ko Karen tuku ingoa, no hakateri aho. Uh, I am based in the South Island of New Zealand in a small town called Ashburton. Um, jump between being classroom teacher in a primary setting um, as well as working as a at a technology centre um, and also doing some um, facilitation for um, schools and for teachers. So um, the first one that I've got as an example here was um, when I've been working with students doing um, the digital mosaic art using um, either Google Slides or Google Draw. And um, I was fortunate enough myself to travel over to Barcelona where um, they have the Sagrada Familia um, and there's uh, an architect, a well, long time ago, architect over there, an artist called Anthony Gaudi. Um, and his style of work was very similar to the mosaic uh, type work. Um, so I, what I did was I used Google Earth to actually take the kids there. Um, so they could then um, explore um, some of the places that had true examples of this mosaic art that then they could use as motivation for their um, artworks as well. So, um, Steve, if I go to sharing, is sharing yep. the screen, is that then going to muck things up? No, it's all good. You just kick me off. It's no problem at all. Okay, I will do that. Oops. Yes, I'm just going to jump into the project. Right, if I go Google Earth, let's try and share that one. Yep, there you go. You should kick me off. There you go. Perfect. Excellent. Okay, so um, this was based with um, a class that was at Hines School, which is just south of um, Ashburton. Um, and what we did was started off obviously in New Zealand, um, took them to their school, um, so they got that concept of where they were in place and time, um, and then flew them halfway around the world um to barcelona and as, as phil said changing the things at the side so that then you could make it um make it fit um and then they could again and in, in that street view they could go and visit each of the different places um in barcelona that um were examples of um gaudi's work so if they come down here into street view and come down here into the casa um then they can actually walk along the street front and um have a look at what it would look like if they were actually there. See if we can get it to spin around. This might be my Wi-Fi slowing down a little bit here. But they can get that whole concept of what it would be like to be where um, Gaudi has created those different um, architectural artworks. And this is going into sort of his Park Gruel. Um, and again, they can then start having a look at some of the um, different aspects of that as their um, as as part of their art, um, and can get them going around the world. I jump to there. Um, the second example I've got there is um, again using Google Earth. Um, but this time, and a little bit similar to what you were talking about, Phil, about um, doing that icebreaker um, type activity. Um, in New Zealand, we um, embracing our Māori culture that um, students can create a mihi. Um, and in this way, they were bringing together their um, culture and identity and um, 
bringing those links to the past as well as connecting through different storytelling as part of the um, English curriculum. Um, using Google Earth meant that um, it was accessible for everybody. Um, it was less daunting for those students who made, found writing a challenge um, and they could record their ideas using images as well as um, being able to do some screen capture as well um, of their project at the end. Um, so what they would then do is jump in to, um, they could then jump into here and they would be able to go to the different places where their um, family were from. And they could, in the um, tabs at the side, they would be able to add in um, things like, for me, Corker Seda to Waka. Uh, this is where the ship that my family came to New Zealand on. And I was able to actually find an archival photo of that ship and add that into the tabs at the site. Um, and that whole idea again of being able to screen capture this um, and they could then talk to them he, as, they, um, as they went through. Um, the beauty of it as well is you can, in these wee side panels, you can link YouTube videos in there. Um, so one of these is actually a YouTube video that then would show what, um, what it looked like to actually be there. I think there was one that I added as well. It even took you for a walk down our main street of Ashburton. So people could, um, if you were from somewhere else, you could see what it was actually like in my town. Um, then we also had, um, again, using the Google My Maps, um, and again, in the writing context, using that to um, bring the old holiday recount to life. Um, rather than everyone writing about what we did in our holidays. Um, we could um, bring that to life first of all on a map and plan that on the map um, and then add points to it as part of our planning before we engaged in the full um, writing of that um, task. And again, nice and easily accessible for students um, and the fact that they could use pictures and symbols to record their ideas um, along the way. So I'll share with you my summer recount. Um, so again, using those layers um, like Phil talked about, we could I could have a layer for Ashburton. Um, I could then explain the different things that I did while I was there. Um, can put a photo in, whether that be coming from Google or from my own images, and just a short statement underneath. Um, what I did when I was working with my year five, six students, um, I had quite a few students who writing was a challenge. Um, so this was how they planned their recount and then they talked it and recorded it through screen capture. Um, that was their way of getting their um, message across. Um, so they just ba they basically had a map each that they could um, they could add those things into. Um, and as Phil said, it's a tool that's very, very easily overlooked, I think, because when you see it in the drive, it's kind of hidden under those more um, things um, within Google Drive. Um, so that was um, quite a powerful tool to be able to use there as well. Um, we've also used it for um, when we've been training for our cross country. Um, so what we did was um, we had a map. We started our point for our school and each day as they, they were doing their cross country training, we recorded how far they traveled and accumulatively got everybody's um, run for that day for the cross country. And then we used the ruler tool in there and we actually measured where we would go. Um, and each day we would then sort of go, okay, are we gonna go left or right? Are we gonna go head north or south? Where, where are we gonna end up? And it actually gave some of those kids that didn't like running, it actually gave them a bit of an incentive to have a crack and um, we would see how far we would go. So yeah, that's, that's my part. Love it. Thank you. Thank you both. And like, I think you've both highlighted a, a really important piece that, um, you know, Google Earth and, and My Maps are two really cool tools that now, because I was previously a geography teacher, they were like, oh, yeah, they're geography teacher tools. But realistically, they're not because, you know, as you can see with both of those examples, the ability to see things and fly places gave, gives everyone a really interesting perspective of the world. Um, especially when you're flying from place to place uh, in Earth. I love the fact that it jumps in and out and actually zooms back in to give you an idea of scale and, and shape. Um, thinking about my maps, I'll kind of throw a couple of questions back to you. 
Um, you know, what's do you use my maps as kind of your first point, or would you plan and then go to maps? What either of you, Phil, Phil or Karen? What, what's your what's your first point for this when you're using it for writing? For writing, for for us, it was actually our first point, and that's where they um, they plotted. It, it was good too because they could reorder things, so they were able to put things in as they thought of it, but then slide things around so they could reorder things to to get the flow of their writing. Um, and that just, yeah, it was a little bit more um, engaging than just doing a brainstorm. Gotcha. Yeah. Bill? Yeah, yeah no, I, I agree. Yeah, like I said, just because of the, the ease of it um, and just the, like a time factor as well. You know, you know, Google Earth can, if you throw them at uh, the deep end straight away, that, you know, can spend time you know, exploring rather than, you know, get the, the draft kind of uh, done first. And But I only realised um, not long ago, like, um, like if you've got a, a project in my maps you can open it in f <laughs> from from there like i was yeah, doing them both separately it's yeah yeah so in, in maps you have the, the ability to um save them as a kml and a kml mm. is, is a language that uh google earth was uh was created in so yes you can open them in earth so the kids can create them all in my maps and then throw them over to earth to, to have a look at it in a different way as well so a uh, really nice idea there of how you can kind of blend those two together as well and it makes it a little less daunting doing it that way because sometimes the kids can get a little bit infatuated by the street view and and the things spinning around and and everything else that actually doing it in my maps first yeah. um keeps them pretty focused yeah that's a really good point i mean I, yeah not just the kids, me as well. And I see Donna's dropped in a, um, a comment there. Donna, do you want to explain what you've just dropped in as a comment there? Yeah, we um, have used my maps. We probably use it every year, actually, when we do perimeter in area, and the kids love to find their own home on the map, and they just change into satellite view so they can see their own home, and then they enlarge it and use the ruler tool. Um, they estimate what they think the perimeter in area will be, and then they use the ruler tools inside it to work out how close they were, how far away they were, and they compare to each other, so although we try not to compare your home is bigger than my home. Um, so we just tend to use our roof, but, you know, like they just do it around the edge of the roof. Uh, and then we do a shared my map and they each plot their own homes. And then we look at distances from school because um, we're not a school where kids just come from the local area. They come from all over Auckland. So then we can kind of see distances and who travels the furthest and yeah so it generates lots of conversation as well nice nice and yeah that's a it's a it's a really good idea you know seeing where where people are from is always a great use of these as well um i'm going to quickly share a little my one of my screens there um and this is a bit of a different view at the moment but it's one things i one of the things i used to love doing especially with my um social studies classes was you know this is a this is what greenland looks like on google earth and one of the things they they do is they'd go hang on a minute that looks completely different than the map we can see up on the wall so it was that really nice learning piece that greenland actually doesn't look like how it looks on the map because the map i used to do a lesson called maps is lies and um it, basically looking at that what is the reason why Greenland looks like this on, on Earth? And it doesn't look like that on the map as well. So really, really nice um, uses there as well. Ben's saying, in my map, so still limited 10 destinations. I don't think so. I don't think so. I would have to would have to find out. Um, another nice little use of, of maps is of my maps. We used to do um, social studies current events on it and get all the students to drop a current event on a my map and, and write about that. So it's a really nice little idea. So thank you both very much for um, sharing the way you've used some geo tools to help bring the world to your classroom. I love it. Um, my absolute favorite tool is still, well, yeah, my, one of my favorite tools is definitely Google Earth. Um, I absolutely love it. Of course, being a geography teacher, why not? So I'm gonna change, let's change my little view here. And we'll jump over into a little bit of a cup, a few updates um, that are available to us. Um, the first one we'll have a look at. So we're going to have a look at um, six main updates in the next about 13 minutes. Um, so we don't go on too long. So the first one is new cover images and docs, document tabs and document and docs as well. Um, 
Oh, gotcha. Yep. So, Kim, we're talking about um, the layers. Yeah. Uh, multi monitor support and slides, improvements for embedded calendars. Notebook LM is now an additional service uh, with data protection. We'll cover that. And a uh, bit of Gemini AI that has been released for Classroom. So, the first one is um, the ability to create a cover image inside a doc. So, this um, is a way of you personalizing kind of that top piece of your doc. Now, this works in pageless format. Um, if you haven't tried pageless format yet in docs, it basically takes away the outside of the page and makes it into a giant canvas. Now, this allows you to do a cover image using the chip. Um, so the way we do it is either to do the insert cover image and then choose the um, image you want or type an at and then do your cover image as well. Either upload it from your computer or use the ones that are already on there as well. So creating those cover images, a lot of work has been done on docs to um, do a lot of development in the back end, which has led to a lot more functionality in the front end as well. So you can see on here, um, the different images you can choose from the stock or you can upload your own. Using that insert cover image and choosing where you wanna bring it in from. Now, the next update uh, to Docs is one of those things that people have been asking about for quite some time, um, the ability to put tabs inside a doc. So if you want, if you have a very, very long doc, uh, you can drop some tabs in it. You can name them. You can also put in some emoji to help people see where they are if they're slightly more visual, just like I do in my Google Classrooms. I drop, drop an emoji in the name. You can do it. You can see here the same. Um, so it's nice to be able to um, navigate around that doc using the tabs down the left-hand side. Also, the ability to create some sub-tabs in there to give your, your um, doc even more structure. So we know that people use these for very, very long documents. Um, this is a way to help to split those up. I guess it's kind of a, a building block on the old idea of those um, little bookmarks you could drop through there as well. Right, yep, we'll be able to get a link out to the slides after this as well, so you can see that great information. In, uh, in slides, when presenting, there are some new options available to you, as you can see on the GIF there. Now, you can choose where you want your slides to go. So if you have multi-monitors, or if you have a monitor and then a, a projector, you can choose what goes onto what device, which is kind of nice to figure out where the slides are gonna sit and then where the, pre present, the presentation bits are gonna go as well. Um, so that is a little upgrade. When you're up in that slide shot at the top there, hit that little down arrow, it gives you the different display options that are available to you. Um, a new update to Google Forms. Um, the ability to do a rating scale inside of forms. So one of those things where instead of just a, a plain one to five, you can actually give yourself a bit of a rating scale on here. The new question type um, allows you to give that rating uh, by setting a scale, including icons. So it's a, it's a bit more visual than it used to be. And it also sets it out really, really nicely for people wanting to. So as you can see there, you can choose a little, little uh, icon or you can give it that slot, that um, one to five gradation across there as well. As it says there on the slide as well, also you can analyze responses in your summary tab. So a nice new one there, you can see it is, in that drop down, you can create a rating in that form. There's a few little accessibility features that are um, inside of, of uh, calendars. Calendar has had a slightly refreshed UI, you may or may not have noticed. Um, the ability to add um, a screen reader into this as well. And some the layout is a, a bit nicer. It's not quite as squished as it used to be. And it also resizes depending on the size of the screen that you're looking on this as well. Okay, jumping across to Notebook LM, the, um, the tool that has kind of taken the world by storm in the last month. So, if you haven't used Notebook LM yet, it is the available, it is the ability 
to upload your own information to a tool and then to ask that information lots of questions. Now, it is an additional service, so at your school you may not have it yet, um, but it can be turned on by your admin for your over 18s. Now, the nice thing about this, as, as it says in there, it's almost as if Notebook LM becomes the expert on what you give it. So it is based on what you are giving it, and that is what your understand what their model's understanding is based on. So when you're using this tool, uh, you upload some information. Uh, you can then ask that information questions. Now let me jump into one of mine uh, to have a look at what we mean. I'm going to quickly change my user so I can show you my example ones I have here. Um, so let's share this tab here. Share the correct one. There we go. So looking at Notebook LM, um, so what I have here is I have a revision book. I have a, a, a notebook around the New Zealand curriculum. Um, and I'm going to open one on the Hawaiian National Parks. So this one here is a PDF on the Hawaiian history. Uh, you can see that that's my source up here. It can create some notes for me. It can create some overviews. Here's my little guide through here. And if I want to add some more sources, this little update we've had here. So there's a new UI to upload some sources. Um, you can choose these different um, sources you can drop in here. So we have docs and slides, we have a website, we have YouTube, and we also have some text. So I could paste some text in there as well. You notice down the bottom, I have a limit of, of 50 uh, sources, and I can then go up here and choose to drop some stuff into my notebook as well. So if you haven't looked at notebook, jump into notebook LM, um, notebooklm.google.com. You can use it in your personal Gmail, or you can use it in your school account, as long as it is switched on in your account. All right, let's jump back over here. Um, so if you want that switched on, have a chat to your admin as well. I just did see a little resource. Uh, right. <laughs> Asking about ES or rubrics. Yeah, so um, interesting questions around that. Yes, you could. Um, just think about which um, which stuff you're going to put into there. You can point it to a rubric, drop something else in, and get it to compare the two. Uh, no, not great at reading the handwriting at the moment. Um, so yeah, type stuff is the way to do it. Good, good, good points. Um, having a look at this last little piece. Um, so this is available to people who have a Gemini license. So this is the paid version of Gemini. The previous tools were all free. Um, this is one of the paid editions inside of Gemini. Um, so Gemini now sits inside Google Classroom. Um, as you can see here, there is, there's my laser pointer, there is, as you can see here, there is a little Gemini education tab inside of Classroom. And there are a couple of things that are now available to people who have a Gemini license inside of Classroom. So we've just start, just launched the ability to create a lesson plan uh, based on a whole lot of criteria you put in to generate uh, a hook. So it could be a, a lesson hook at the beginning or it could be a, a roundup at the end. You can also go, go in and generate a quiz and then export it out to forms. Now, remembering that forms will also export to practice sets. So um, some people have asked about how do we create them with AI? This is a way to do it. So from here out to a, a form, from a form to practice sets as well, if you want to start smashing a whole lot of different apps together. And then down the bottom, re-level a text. So the bottom left here is re-leveling a text. Put a text in and ask it to re-level and then create that resource for your classroom. So inside of Classroom, uh, there is the ability to have those extra features if you have access to a Gemini license as well. So the Gemini and Workspace license, remember, is a completely standalone um, license you can buy for one person or for many if you like. So that's Gemini in Classroom. Um, if you are uh, 
I'm not sure that dollar. I'm not sure what the price is of Magic Storm. Good question. Um, there are some discounts available around um, Gemini licensing, um, depending on what edition you have your school as well. Um, so they are ninety nine a year for Magic School. Um, Gemini is a bit more than that, but you do get the whole workspace. Um, abilities through that um that gemini license as well as the increased abilities in the gemini chat as well so um slightly different price there but slightly more functionality as well so have a look you can have a look on our edu.google.com website and it actually shows you the different pricings that are available on there um if you are a member of our different communities um so there's the champions the GEGs uh, and the GEAG as well as on here as well. So the Google Education Admin Groups um, and the Google Education Leaders Group. So you can see on here is our new Google for Education community platform. The link for that is googleforeducationcommunity.com and you can then choose which of those hubs you are a part of. If you are a champion, you can then go into that hub and ask to join that one. The admin group is in the middle there and then the educational leader group is on the side so if you haven't joined those jump over to that as part of our champions communities or part of our different communities because a lot of the old groups we have like the google group for instance is going to be shut down and all our communications will be coming through the community platform there is the ability to have conversations um, to, to share resources to upvote things um, to earn little status points as a as our main um, contributor as well so the Google for Education community platform is where we're moving all of our community interactions as well. And there are a couple of new ones coming to that shortly as well. So the main ones there are those three, the Champions Hub, the Education Admin Group, and the Education Leader Group as well. So the Education Leader Group um, is for our um, department level or cluster level um, leaders. Then the um, admin group are for the people who obviously are our admins, and then our champions hub is for our champions community there. So go to the Google for Education community hub at googleforeducationcommunity.com and sign up if you're part of those communities. Okay. He says, looking at time with one minute to go. Not too bad. Um, so we have, we do this every month. Um, that we would love to hear some feedback from you about how things are going, suggested content for next year as we head towards the end of the year. We have one more Learn with Google left. So feel free to jump over to bit.ly, learn with Google feedback, or scan that QR code that's there. I'll do a nine second wait time for those. There we go. So there's our wait time. So now obviously you can come back and watch the recording of this and, and grab those, um, or you can get hold of the slides as well when we share those out via our calendar invitation. So the previous webinars all live on a YouTube playlist. Um, you can go back and have a look at any of these webinars that we have had this year, and even some back previously as well. At um, bit.ly, learning with Google underscore rewatch is where you'll find those. Of course, if you would like a uh, a PD certificate for your hour that you've spent with us, so 12 hours this year for those of us, those of you who have been along um, to all of our sessions or watch them on the, on the rewatch as well, there is the ability to create um, a professional learning certificate, a GFE certificate, fill in the form and magically a certificate will shoot its way out to you by the magic of a couple of things in the background from Google Forms add-ons. So that is us, bang on 6.15. Um, just before we um, finish the recording, I'd like to say thank you very much to Philip and Karen for presenting today about some of my favorite tools, the, the Geo tools. Um, hopefully you've seen a way that you can use them in your classroom, may give a little different view on how you can maybe do a bit of writing or visualize kids' worlds with, with those tools. So thank you very much. Philip and Karen. There's lots of lots and lots of uh, applauses going through there. As we've come to the end, I will um, finish our recording now. That will then be available to you.